this video, I will be describing how to use the cumulative charts for each Greek, as it is the most succinct way to capture some vital clues about expected movement in the underlying. This video is made on December 28, 2022, and the examples are from SPX. See right here are the cumulative charts. So let's begin. First, we're going to start with delta. The delta cumulative chart here is just one line finding the net delta dealers have at the moment. This number will also give you how much the dealers are long or short. So in this example, dealers are long $137 billion in Delta Notional in their option books. So therefore it is safe to assume that dealers are short 137 billion Notional in ES or ES futures, the underlying used for SPX options. Since they have one day options, you can also see if the dealers need to buy or sell to even their books for expiration. In this case, Delta is at $2 billion. So you can assume that they have to unwind $2.2 billion in short ES contracts. This is shown to be a more effective indicator for larger option expirations in monthly or quarterly OPEX, but there is so much trading in options expiring on day, the zero days duration trading, that this signal can be very noisy for one day option planning. However, we're studying its effects and distribution, so stay tuned. Next, we'll look at Vega. Vega and Theta are also straight cumulative lines. Here's Vega and here's Theta. At Voland, we assume that 85% of the Vega that you see, and therefore also Theta, is hedged outside the option space with VX futures or forward realized variant swaps. However, you can get an idea of how customers are positioned in options. So because right now we see a very large negative number in Vega, roughly negative 874 billion, and you can see that positive number in Theta, this means that customers are net long volatility and are net buyers of options because of the Theta. You can look in the balance charts to the left of the cumulative charts, which is right here to see which strikes customers are focused on. But overall, this can have some implications for your assumptions on how customers would act in these situations. Maybe rolling long puts or rolling short puts. This could also have implications, particularly in the Vega section, for VX future hedging unwind when it is time for volatile expiration. We will now move to gamma and delta adjusted gamma. These cumulative charts are calculated differently. You can see that there's actually variance by each strike. Essentially what we do is we start at the money, which in this case would be right around here at this 38 section, and we calculate it going in both directions starting there. Essentially, this is the accumulation as you go along in the strikes. So for instance, here in gamma, you see large negative strikes right here, and they correspond to the large negative downdraft right here. Conversely, here you see a large positive strike up here in this 4075 zone, and you'll see that there's a large positive up here. The difference between gamma and delta adjusted gamma it's quite simply that we flip the sign for any strike that is above the current market price in order to visually show you where dealers would have to buy. So anything positive, like right here, would be a buying strike at $50 million per point, and any large negative would be selling strikes on a per point basis. This would be very useful to you because as you can see, these would represent strong support or resistance areas. So here you could see that we would accelerate selling if we get to these strikes on the delta adjusted gamma curve. If you want to see strict resistance and support instead of buying or selling, then you would just use the gamma. Anything with large negative gamma would be a lack of support and anything with strong positive gamma would be a lot of support or support or resistance area. So this would help you with your trading in the out months. Vanna is calculated similarly to the gamma. It starts with the strike right here in the middle, which will always turn out to be zero. 50 delta is always zero Vanna. And we accumulate it to either side. However, this cannot be looked at the same way as gamma, since it is the impact of the underlying's movement on Vega, not on delta. But because it is the impact from implied volatility, which is a force outside the underlying movement, all strikes are impacted when implied volatility moves. 
So when I look at VANA cumulative charts, what I do is I look at both total VANA and the ratio of each cumulative VANA on either side. So first looking at total VANA, you can see this is very positive and this is also very positive, meaning that we have a sharp positive VANA. If you want to look at how positive it is or like historically how much it is, you could look here and see that even though this is strong positive VANA, that over the past several months, this is not as bad as it used to be. But when you see strong positive VANA like this, you can assume that the distribution of possible outcomes becomes wider or a platycurtic distribution. Kurtosis, you get fatter tails due to kurtosis. And then when you look at the ratio, you see this is much more positive than this one. Even if we had a, like this with Apple, this is strongly positive and this is negative, but because this is more positive, then you could assume that Apple is going to have a decline or it's going to lean in that direction. Basically that the distribution of outcomes will skew to the downside for Apple. Here at SPX, it will be the same thing, even though they're both positive, because it is more positive here toward the bottom and toward the downside, we are going to have a skew to the downside in SPX. The difference will indicate strength. So the amount different that it is here, which is roughly 27 billion versus here, which is roughly 75 billion, that 50 billion or so is going to be the indicator how strongly skewed we will be to the downside. So in this case, even though both bullish and bearish sides are positive, the bearish is higher. So that means you could expect the negative skew to return, but not too much. Thank you for watching this video and may Volant help you find success in your trading ventures.